Want to hear the crazy story about how the California music industry almost totally crashed and burned because of an ill-conceived law? Check this out. For people that aren't familiar with what happened, it was, you know, in in 2019, they signed a law, the governor Newsom signed a law in California called AB5 that essentially made independent contracting illegal. You couldn't you couldn't designate anyone as an independent contractor. Like everybody had to be an employee. So what that means for musicians was like if I wanted to hire a drummer for a hundred bucks for my gig on Saturday, I couldn't just Venmo him a hundred dollars and be done with it. I actually had to set up a payroll company. I had to put this drummer on payroll. I had to withhold taxes. I had to get workers' compensation insurance. I had to get all these other various insurances. I had to incorporate myself. I had to, you know, so like something that was supposed to be easy and a hundred dollar gig for this drummer now is costing me thousands of dollars because I have to set up this, I have to essentially incorporate myself as a corporation. And it was just like, it was crazy. And so, you know, when this was signed into law, initially this law was proposed to help protect Uber and Lyft drivers and say like, all right, these giant companies can take better care of their drivers. And we're all like, okay, yeah, that sounds reasonable. And sure, they're billion dollar companies. Like, sure, they can afford to put their drivers on payroll, whatever. But indie musicians, <laughs> it didn't make sense for, but also the entire music industry, it didn't make sense for, because the same thing, if I wanted to go play a gig at a venue, the venue would have to put me on payroll as a singer songwriter and be like, oh, now I'm an employee of the venue for this one gig. Yeah, or if you hire a wedding singer or a wedding Same band, thing. right? Yep. All of that. Anyone. So what we saw. So here's the thing. Like nobody in the music industry that I knew heard about this law or knew that this was affecting. I learned about it a month before it was being implemented after it was already signed into law. So like we're talking the end of 2019. It was going into effect start of 2020. I learned about this. So then I started freaking out and I wrote an Ari's Take blog article about it saying, yo, the California music industry is about to crash and this is why. And that blog article went viral. At the end of it, I was like, tweet the congresswoman who wrote the, the assemblywoman who wrote this and tweet the governor and write letters and here's how to do it. So their offices were getting thousands of letters and tweets and they're like, oh my gosh, wait, what's going on here? What happened? And so, you know, I was then getting into Twitter battles with the assemblywoman who wrote this bill. And she's like, well, why don't you come to my office and let's talk about it? I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. So I rallied up some musicians. We went into her office and we told her about it. And she's like, oh, okay, well, y'all, you, the whole music industry and all the unions have to agree on this. And, and I was like, what? I was going to all of these legislators' offices Offices. I sat in the Senate Majority Leader's office. I remember this meeting very well because there's like 10 musicians. We're all sitting around his office. He's sitting there, Senator Robert Hertzberg. And he was like, we, we all tell him our story. We tell him everything like why this doesn't work for us. And he's like, wow, we really do you guys, huh? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, you did. He's like, huh? And we're like, okay, so can you can you change this? He's like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, we can't. I'm like, wait, why not? You just said he fucked us. Like, why, why wouldn't you do something to help us? He's like, wow. We just, you know, it's just not that easy. You know, the only way that I can get my colleagues to come along with a new bill and a new thing is like, you need public pressure. I'm like, go on. It's like, wow, you got to get in this publication. And, you know, they read this journal and they read this newspaper and they pay attention to these TV shows and news stations. I'm like, so I'm, I'm taking furious notes. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So then I went to all those publications and all those news programs. I literally drove down to San Diego to the Assemblywoman's home district and went on her local news station and called her out by name saying she's us and like she doesn't care to help us and why is she against all indie musicians like why do you hate music why, why do you hate indie musicians and she was like what the fuck? and so she's tweeting at me you know 10 minutes after this air she's like you misrepresented me i'm like well then help us and it was kind of like you know i got a crash course in politics this is like no one cared to do anything even though they knew it was wrong and that they should write this wrong until they got massive public pressure so in the end you know we had got 185,000 signatures from California music professionals that we would armed with this petition to go and say, hey, we have 185,000 signatures on this petition saying we don't like this law. Can you change it now? Like now? So like, okay, we'll, we'll just continue to embarrass you a little bit more with your constituents. If that's what's really going to take, like that's what's going to, and they, you know, I was 